Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to install or how to download and install the uh, Zebo mod for X-Plane, which is the 737 mod that improves the stock 737 in X-Plane. So the first thing we would do is go into a browser and we would look for the Zebo 737 and that will take us to our website called zebomod.com. So we click on that. This website isn't always the fastest, but it's it's really a stepping off point to the places you can download the the bits and pieces. So it's got download Zebo mod. So we will click on that and we'll have a look. And that takes us to the Google Drive of the Zebo project. We will want to download the full version. And you can see it's it's just over a gigabyte actually. So you will right click on it and you will download. I've already done it, so I don't have to do that. These are patches to it. You, They are incremental. They don't um, go over the top of each other. So, you know, they don't include each other's contents. So you need all the patches as well if you really want to patch it up to the latest version. So for each of those, you will right click and download and right click and download. So in terms of the aircraft that's all you actually need but you will also see it says all you need so there are lots of other extras you can get liveries there's an add-on called terrain radar which makes the terrain radar work correctly inside the aircraft there's an add-on tablet that appears inside the aircraft called avitab there's also an updater that i don't bother using so i've downloaded i've already downloaded terrain radar i'll show you how to install it i've already downloaded avitab and i'll show you how to install it there's also a wonderful plugin called Better Pushback, which lets you plan out your pushback, ready for the trucks to come and push your aircraft back. And again, I've downloaded that. I'll show you it. And the other thing I'll show you right at the end is Sim Toolkit Pro, which is fantastic. I think it's by far the best of the, the flight tracking tools that are around. OK, so I have already downloaded everything, so I can get rid of the browser. And we can have a look in my downloads folder. So you can see here. We've got these are the various zip files I downloaded. So you can see I downloaded the 737-800X full. That's the Zebo mod, the main file. And you can see over here, if I make this window a bit wider, it was 1.5 gig. I've also downloaded both patches. I've downloaded Avitab and I've downloaded Better Pushback and Terrain Radar. So the first thing you're going to do is unzip all of those. So the only one I haven't unzipped here is terrain radar so I'll get it to do that and it's done it it's a tiny little add-on so you can see I've now got a folder that corresponds with each zip file so what we're going to do and I'm going to use a trick in Windows 10 to do this to make it easy for you to see I can go to the file menu and open a new window so I get two Explorer views so we'll keep the source files over here and we'll navigate to where we're going to put them over here so the contents of the 737 full folder it has another folder inside it which is the actual aircraft because if you look inside here these are all the binaries that make up the actual aircraft so you want to actually go and put that if you look in the x-plane 11 folder if you've installed it, it yourself it'll be on the root of a drive probably if you've installed it in steam it's in program files 86 steam steam apps common x-plane 11 so within the X-Plane 11 folder, you're going to look inside aircraft. Now you can see I've already had a copy of this in the past. So I'm going to write it over the top of itself. So I'm going to move that to the aircraft folder. And Windows will probably trip over at some point and say, did you mean to merge this? So we'll let it do what it does. Give it its chance. There we go. Replace the files in the destination. And off it goes with moving the files across. It takes a little while because this is one and a half gig after all. Um, it says three minutes. It's not going to take three minutes. Well, I'd be highly surprised if it does. I'm quite shocked it's taking that long, to be honest, because this is on an SSD. And it's moving from one folder to another. There we go. <laughs> See, that was kind of what I expected. So then you will go into the patch folders. So for the patches, you copy their contents directly into the 
the the um, the Zebo mod folder itself. Replace all the files. So the folder structure is already there. You're just replacing it. And patch number two. There are utilities that help you do this. I think it's actually easier to do it yourself. You can see there's a plugins folder. That was actually part of it. That was Windows Explorer playing up. It was still showing something it had already moved. So we've already dealt with these three so we can get rid of them. The remaining three are plugins for the simulator. So if you go back to our Xplane 11 folder and go into resources, there's a plugins subfolder under resources, and this is where all your plugins live. So it's the same kind of deal. Each plugin seems to do this differently, which is frustrating. So I'm just going to delete my zip files because I don't need them anymore because I've already unzipped them. So if I look inside Avitab, that's the plugin. If you look inside it, there's a ton of binaries. So the Avitab one, you can see I already had it installed, but I'm going to upgrade it because I haven't done it for a while. So I'm going to move that, replace. So that's replaced Avitab. Better pushback. You can see this has got the binary files directly under it. So it seems to be if they've got version numbers on the end, those are not the folders you actually want to move. It's the ones without the numbers. Replace. The reason Better Pushback has so many files in it is it has regional accents for all over the world. So when you land and you call for the tow truck, it um, the the guy on the radio will have a regional accent. It's really good. So Terrain Radar. So we're going to just drag the Terrain Radar folder over and replace it. So that is, we can go and empty our recycle bin. That is the installation of um, the Zebo mod. So if I go now and run Xplain 11, we will hopefully see that we have a nice 737 to play with. So it's just launching Xplain 11. Here it comes. I'm running 11.5 Vulcan, uh, which is the beta, but it really doesn't matter if you're running 11.4 or 11.5. So we go new flight, and you will see we have two versions of the aircraft. We have a 4K version and a standard version. The 4K version has just got higher quality textures in the cockpit. That's the only difference. So I'm going to go with the, the standard version. We'll put ourselves on the ground somewhere, so I'll go for EGSS, London Stansted. And I'll put ourselves on, yep, Stan 34 is fine. So it should be cold and dark, I imagine. Um, for the purposes of this demo, actually, let's start, yeah, it's already ticked, start with engines running. You can see I've got a few liveries, I'll show you how to do that as well. Standard, London Stansted. Um, we'll customize the weather and have clear skies for ourselves and lunchtime just so we see it in nice bright sunshine. So we now wait for the simulator to load. While we're waiting for that, we can go and have a look at liveries via this website, zebomod.com. They've obviously got a link to a load of the liveries that are available for it, which takes you to xplane.org. Um, you can see included in the download, you get a few liveries from the, the aircraft itself. Um, but they've made like a, a directory, I guess, of lots and lots of liveries that people have made. And it's a lot because the Zebo mod's been around for a while and it's based on the 3D model of the stock aircraft. They've just replaced the internals of it. So you can get basically not just individual airlines, but <laughs> individual real codes of airliners. Uh, of pretty much all of them. It's um, it's very impressive. So yeah, you can just download whatever you want. So uh, just to demonstrate doing this, we'll go and get a, a 2E one. Well, actually, no, let's get a Lufthansa because I've flown on Lufthansa a number of times. I think they fly the 737. Lufthansa, here we go. So we'll go for this one, ABXN. So there's some screenshots of it, and I've already got a log on for explain.org. It's a free forum. We'll download this livery. Oh, it's 53 meg. Wow. You really must have gone to town with it. So 
So we'll just wait for it to download. Give it a few seconds. Is this still going? X-Plane is still loading in the past because it's using Vulkan. Vulkan is notoriously slow at starting up. Wait for this download to finish. Yeah, Vulcan loads all the shaders for all of the graphics at load time to prevent the scene, the simulator having to load anything while it's running. So it takes a bit longer because of that. So if we go and look in that, um, yeah, where we go. So we can copy the livery. We can go into X plane, and we can go into aircraft, and we can go into the seven three seven eight hundred. And there's a liveries folder. If there isn't a liveries folder, you can just make one. And this works for any aircraft as long as it has a liveries folder and then you can paste your your livery folder in again i used the, the same method of looking for which folder had things in it that were objects you know or binaries so that's done that we can get rid of that browser is this finished loading yet it's still loading the aircraft b737 800x it's never seen the aircraft before Wait for the program. Hopefully it hasn't. Hopefully I haven't broken it. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt and just wait. Let's see if this is moving. Okay, I'm going to Control Alt Delete. Oops. Control Alt Delete. Task Manager. X Plane is still using the processor, so it is still doing something. So I'm going to leave it alone. There we go. It was just taking a long time. Here we go. And we're on the tarmac. You can see there's plugins kicking off. That's because I've got the X Audio plugin for um, VATSIM. So you can see we've got the various plugins and they're installed and running. So all you have to do is drop them in the folder and they're working. We can look around. And this is the Zebo Mod 737. And you can see we can zoom in and out. The, um, the screens will work completely properly. So because we've got terrain radar, the button is there. Obviously it's going to show some crazy stuff probably while we're sitting here, but... See, that's, it'd be interesting actually to see if it does show anything while we're on the ground. Probably doesn't. Um, you've got the AviTab tablet. So this gives you access to all sorts of things. You can do things like the PA system. If we go and talk to the passengers. We were to move ourselves around. We can walk around the airplane. Before we depart, we'll be close to right on schedule today. Should be just a few more minutes. Uh, maintenance will wrap up and hand us our logbook and we'll be on our way. Thanks for your patience. So yeah, the, um, the Zebo 737 is fantastic. Everything works in the cockpit, which is the, mo well, the main thing, I guess. Um, because I've replaced it, I've lost my, key my mappings of the control panels. So I won't go into that in this demonstration, but yeah, the the Zebo is a, a completely different animal to the stock simulator, or the stock aircraft, I should say. So you can go into the FMC, and you can do position initialization. And if we hadn't, if we'd started from cold and dark, that would have all have worked. It's saying nav data out of date because my Navigraph data isn't up to date because I don't have a subscription. Um, yeah, ev everything's going to work in here, so it's quite. It's quite interesting to go and program it up. So you obviously you can put your route in and do performance initialization. And where, do, where it's really nice on the AviTab, you can go into here, go into fuel weight, and go into payload, and it tells you your numbers for the FMC. So you've got you know gross weight 101.3. So we could put that in there. 101.3. This is really deserving of its own tutorial, isn't it? Reserves, 2, cost index, 5. 
Uh, what altitude are we going to fly at? 360. So there we go, flight level 360, execute, and then we can go and put our limits in, then we can do our takeoff performance. So 5 degrees flaps, our centre of gravity is over here, 19.8. So this all works completely properly, as it should, which makes it kind of fun to fly. Um, we've got legs, yeah, I haven't even put a route in yet, have I? So where are we going to go from and to? Origin, we are EGSS. Let's go to Edinburgh, for example, EGPH. Um, and then go to legs, oh sorry, departure and arrival. So departing from EGSS on say, maybe we're taking off from runway 22. And we're not going to bother with a SID. And destination. Oh, I forgot. What am I doing? Activate. Execute. And arriving at EGPH. We'll come in runway 6 on the ILS. We won't use a star. And we'll execute. And suddenly, this is all coming to life. So it's very, very good we can do pretty much everything we want um, yeah obviously the legs page works perfectly so you can go in and put in your waypoints obviously I haven't got a complete flight plan yet because I've got no waypoints but you can see how it would work um, but yes everything overhead works properly um, there's not much else to say really it's just very very good so if we pan out a little bit and we'll whoops just trying to move ourselves around. Uh, shift nine, go sideways. Look up in the air. Pull away with the camera, so you can see. Everything is here and everything works. It's quite. It's probably quite a fantastic um, educational aid for student pilots that are doing Boeing training, I imagine just to get the kind of the muscle memory of where things are. Um, yeah, not much else to say really. So that's the, Z the Zebo mod. If we go and look outside, I've got the Qantas paintwork on it at the moment. You can see it's very, very high quality. Um, yeah, not much else to say. So that was installing the Zebo mod for X-Plane 11.4 or 11.5 and the various plugins for it. Just to give you an idea of what the plugins were, if we go and do pushback, for example, we can go plugins, uh, better pushback, and we can pre-plan our pushback and then start the pushback. We can also do it through here. So we can say we want to go to, uh, where is it, ground services, better pushback so it's all integrated we want to pre-plan and it shows us a map overhead of where we are and we can delete the bits we've done and we can say okay we want to be pushed back to here for example ground to cockpit plan acknowledge call me through the menu when you're ready and as you can see you get a regional accent of somebody on the radio and when you agree it uh, the truck will drive up hook up and you'll be instructed over the radio with disconnecting on or sorry um switching on and off the, the wheel brakes to allow them to push the aircraft. It just works, it's great. Um, what else is on here? So let's have a look in the plugins menu. We installed AviTab, we've seen that. Better push back terrain radar. Yeah, we'd have to be in the air to see the radar, but it's very good, it works very well. And that's it, that's the end of our installation.